Most carnivores are solitary, going through life as single individuals, with only a limited number of species living in social groups. Females are usually the sole carers of offspring, with males taking no responsibility. This means that mating is the only effective function of males, apart from self-preservation. Male carnivores are therefore highly focused on maximizing mating opportunities and assuring access to receptive females. This has the potential for high levels of aggression as individuals strive for maximum competitive advantage, which can be advantageous for the individuals but is detrimental for the social structure. For example, males constantly fighting over females with a clear winner having the advantage but in the process making it difficult for all the females to raise young within such an aggressive arena of competing males. However, in reality such high aggression levels are relatively rare, and the reason for this concerns the intricate communication system of carnivores, leaving messages behind that can settle scores without having to be physical. This will be illustrated using large cats as an example. Cats use their eyesight and hearing for hunting. They hone in on prey they hear, stalking closer and closer, and then they use their keen eyesight with night vision capacity to accurately pinpoint the target for a final charge. Unlike dogs or marten species, members of the canid and mustelid family, cats do not use smell for detecting prey. The range at which they can detect smells is relatively small. They can see something before they can smell it. However, when cats do smell something, they are very good at accurately distinguishing different odors, with recent research indicating that they are likely better at this than dogs. The world of odors is the cat world of communication. Cats have multiple options for leaving odor signals behind for communication. The easiest are fecal and urine samples, as cheap waste products that they need to leave in the environment anyway. Next to this, cats have several glands, in their cheeks and in between their toes, which they can use for leaving secretions behind when rubbing or scratching. Cats can therefore leave odor marks by spraying urine, defecating in specific locations, or scratching, scraping and rubbing particular objects or spots on the ground. And all these actions leave products of information behind that are highly distinctive, allowing other cats to recognize individuals by smell without ever having to see them. The scent of all these products is thus individually identifiable. Cats are equally able to assess the decay of these signals, which tells them how long ago the signal was left behind. Other than the individual and the age of the signal, it can indicate the sex of the individual, sexual receptiveness of the individual, health status, maturity, and many other factors. In many ways, it's a means of advertising, like people do on social media indicating your presence, ability, and status. Through this system of leaving posts and reading those of others, cats arrange mating events and organize their own home range use. Within dense jungle environments, it's easy to hide and difficult to find each other. Leaving a message at random locations is therefore like dropping a bottle in the ocean, unlikely to get picked up. It's therefore important for a cat who wants to communicate to find locations with high traffic where other cats can find their messages. An established cat familiar with the area it lives in will use well-worn, easy travel routes to move around its home range, leaving scent marks at regular intervals along its travel path. This will indicate his or her presence in the area for others, indicating occupation. The cat will walk these paths continuously, returning to check up on its own markings and refreshing them. It will equally check for any counter markings of other individuals, preferring of course a message from the opposite sex in the right state of sexual readiness, 
but ready to react with a vigorous increase of countermarkings if there is a conspecific of the same sex indicating, I am also here. The initial individual will now know how long ago this countermark was made, with any refreshing mark from its side indicating, I'm still here and have come back. This can start an escalating marking match, increasing the potential for a physical encounter with individuals honing in on the most recently made marks. However, any cat has the possibility to bail out of these marking wars by simply stopping their marking activity while continue to remain in the area. Such an individual can still gain a lot of information of conspecifics by passively reading the signs of the actively marking individuals. How many are there and how long ago did they pass in this particular area? The non-marking individual can remain in the area without advertising their presence, staying under the radar of the active participants. Marking, therefore, is a sign of dominance, indicating I'm willing to show myself if necessary and I will confront you if I encounter you. Younger transient males without bulked out muscle mass and not yet having an established area want to remain unnoticed and will not mark. Equally females with cubs will not mark, as they do not want to meet any males who might kill their cubs. Males frequently commit infanticide when they are uncertain if they fathered the cubs. Both these younger males and females with young will urinate and defecate away from the trail in places that remain unnoticed by cats walking on the well-trodden marking paths, the messaging board routes. The situation for females changes considerably when they are coming into heat, ready for reproduction. They actually need to meet males and are ready to mate. If they are looking for a mate, the marking signals are highly informative in terms of choosing the right partner. Frequency and consistency of marking are truthful signals of the ability of males to maintain themselves in the area. Mating with a frequent and consistent marking male means you are mating with a dominant male in the area. The marking signals tell the female that this is the male she's most likely to encounter in the future with her cubs, whether he's the father or not. If he is the father of the cubs, he will likely leave them alone and the female can be on her way with the cubs unharmed. If he isn't the father, there's a high probability he will commit infanticide as he meets an unknown female with unknown cubs. It is therefore best, from the perspective of security for her cubs, that this male will become the father. Equally, without meeting the male, the marking signals show a good and truthful assessment of his ability as a dominant male, indicating good individual characteristics. Research with pumas has actually shown this relation clearly indicating increased mating success with high and consistent marking frequency. A small number of males who consistently and frequently mark seem to father most of the cubs within a population. In the Americas, research on marking behavior of pumas is made somewhat easier by their consistent use of scrapes on the ground as a marking signal. These scrape marks are easily detected and thus studied as visual cues that can be picked up by human researchers placing cameras to study patterns of marking. The neotropical puma lives together sympatrically with a larger neotropical jaguar. Jaguars mark differently. They have much more of a tendency to urinate on trees and general vegetation. They equally roll on the ground, flattening this vegetation. Such signs are much more difficult to find consistently by researchers. Scent marks equally provide information for other species living in the area. The large, dominant jaguar seems to ignore markings made by the smaller puma. While pumas will check out jaguar markings, as these provide information on the presence and whereabouts of these larger and potentially threatening cats. In the same way, the smaller ocelot checks out puma marks, together with a slew of other small carnivores. Pumas prey on many of these medium-sized carnivores and thus these animals like to remain aware of the presence of pumas. 
Some of these smaller carnivores go as far as rolling in puma marks, potentially to smell more menacing and or disguise their own smell. Ungulates, like these peccaries here, equally smell markings of cats, and they can frequently be seen to be alarmed when they encounter them. The world of smell and scent marking is thus extremely important for solitary species, and in many ways you should not call them solitary at all. They simply do not meet, but they vigorously communicate with each other, leaving messages which shape and create the social structure they live in.